state of the system conditioned on the trajectory being uh, alpha uh, mu nu is, is given by, by this guy with some probability, uh, transition probability related to, to this guy. Uh, yeah, this, this is, uh, this feels wrong. Hang on, I have to think about this. But anyway, <laughs> this part is, is fine, but this, I have to think about it. Um, yeah, okay. So, so now that you have this, uh, you can talk about the path probability as just being given by these three numbers. There's a conditional probability of initially finding system and bath in their states and then finding the bath in the final state times the initial probabilities. And from this, you can reconstruct the state of the system as a sum over all trajectories. So the final state of the system is a sum over all possible conditional states with path probabilities. However, this, this is not an eigen decomposition. There are more states here than the basis uh, requires. So, so uh, these states are not, do not form a basis. Uh, so if you diagonalize the final state, you get a new basis, which is not uh, trivially related to these guys. Uh, but n notwithstanding, we, we can define a uh, probability of being fine in different eigenstates as being related to the sum over all paths times the prob a conditional probability of finding this uh, system in beta given that uh, it was in one of these final states. And so this introduces the idea of augmenting, augment, augmenting the trajectory. I'll talk a bit more about this in a second. But essentially, we can, instead of thinking about this guy, we can also think about a, a larger trajectory, which has four quantum numbers. So which is system bath, system bath. And essentially, all you need to do is you need to start with the original trajectory, and you just augment it with the conditional probability. And in this case, it's, it's, it's fine. I mean, because of these thermal operations, this doesn't really matter. It's kind of a subtlety. Uh, we could have just measured the system twice. And if you had measured the system twice, initially in alpha and in the end in beta, you would get the same result. So in this case, this is um, uh, just kind of silly. But this idea of augmented trajectories will actually become more important in a second. OK. Um, so now for the backward process. What we could do is we measure the system and the environment. W the system is in the final state, so it's in, a, in an eigenstate state psi beta prime. So we measure this in this basis. And we measure the environment again in equilibrium. And then we evolve with the time reversed unitary. And then we, we do the same business. We just define the backward um, conditional state and the backward probability. And again, the backward uh, trajectory. Uh, and so this is all um, rather standard, except for detail, which is related to where do you start the final state? Uh, so in the backward protocol, how do you define the initial state of the backward protocol? And this is discussed in this paper. Um, but we took one of the definitions. There's more than one. So from this, you, you get the entropy prediction, the stochastic entropy prediction is just the ratio of the forward and backward probabilities, which turn out to be just the ratio of these numbers. So just to review, P alpha is the initial population of the system uh, in its density matrix basis. And P beta prime is the final populations. And Qs are the thermal populations of the bath. Uh, and then, of course, by construction, this guy will uh, satisfy an integral fluctuation theorem. And on average, this will give us the formula we want for the entropy production. Okay. So up to here, it's, um, it's uh, quite OK. And then we ask the same question as before. We say, OK, I want to split this guy now into a diagonal part and a part related to quantum coherences. And what are these contributions? So um, one way to do that is to again introduce these ideas of augmented trajectories. They were used uh, somewhat recently in this paper, but it turns out that the, uh, the, I mean the idea overall is, is quite old. Uh, there is this paper by Dirac, which already discusses these augmented trajectories. Uh, so essentially, the idea is I had some quantum numbers, so alpha, beta for the system, mu and nu, sorry, this is a typo, for the bath. And now I augmented with energy basis trajectories. So n and m are the energy basis of the system. And I do that by introducing some conditional probabilities, p n given alpha, which is the probability of finding the system in the energy basis n, given that it is in psi alpha, and similarly for the final state. Now, of course, I mean, these, these conditional probabilities, they are of limited use, right? I mean, if we could do this without punishment, we, I mean, I mean this is clearly um, not, um, we can get into trouble. For instance, if we try to use Bayes' theorem, in probability theory, it doesn't work. So these things, they work up to a certain extent. But of course, uh, these kinds of probabilistic rules don't hold for quantum mechanics in general. But if you do them carefully, uh, you can get consistent results out of it. 
Uh, and then if you do that, then the diagonal uh, part of the entropy production can be similarly defined as just related to these populations in the energy basis, and then whatever is left of the original entropy production, you just throw away in the coherence part. Right? But that being said, this part related to the coherences is, uh, has a clear physical interpretation because it's related to this notion of uh, information gain. So it's essentially a ratio of uh, probabilities in different bases. So you have the initial uh, state, so you have probabilities P alpha and Pn, and the ratio of them is related to the, the information gain uh, that um, because you, you are, your system is in a basis uh, psi alpha, but then you want to ask how much information can you get in a basis n, and similarly for the, for the final state. Uh, these guys work. They work in the sense that if you average them, you get the uh, formulas that we wrote before for the average entropy production due to the diagonal terms and due to coherences. However, they do not satisfy a fluctuation theorem, which I find quite interesting. Uh, so there's a paper by John, um, which appeared around the same time as ours, uh, which discusses a very similar formulation, but for unitary driving dynamics and um, uh, what Eric called a mechanical driving in terms of work and so on. And in their case, they satisfy independent fluctuation theorems. And in Eric's case, uh, Eric's uh, talk, the problem he was showing also satisfy a um, uh, independent fluctuation theorems. But in this case, they do not satisfy it. Uh, we, and in fact, the reason why they do that is re uh, why they don't satisfy it is ultimately related to the fact that you know uh, me quantum mechanical bases are not compatible. So these augmented trajectories they only work uh, up to a limited extent. Uh, Okay, and then finally, yeah. So f finally, if I should try to squeeze this in, but this is a, a ongoing work. It's in collaboration with Rafael Chavez and Lucas, and also with Paul Richards from, from Singapore. So the idea here is to try to extend a bit of this idea to a, si a scenario where you have multiple systems interacting with individual baths, um, and these systems don't interact at all. At all. However, there's only one ingredient which is that the initial state of the system is, is non-local. So you start with a global state, a, a row of every, every green guy, which is a non-local state. You prepare that somehow. But then you allow them to interact with local baths and how to uh, formulate entropy production in that sense. So the idea is something like this. You have a system. This state is a, is a multipartite state. can be arbitrary. And then you have a bunch of local environments. And then you interact with a big unitary U. And this unitary is, a, is a, a set of local unitaries. Uh, there could be work. So uh, I'm treating work here in similar spirit to uh, Tony Short's talk. So essentially, I will define heat as the rate of, as the change in uh, energy of the environments. And whatever is missing, I will call it work. But I will not uh, um, I will worry too much about that right now. And so what one can do is w the entropy production is defined in the usual way as a rate of change of the system entropy plus all the heats. And this is equivalent to the uh, total, uh, sorry, the, the mutual information between system and environment and the um, uh, relative entropy of the environment. But what we can do now is we introduce the total correlations, which is essentially a measure of, um, is a generalization of the mutual information, but for n partite systems, it's how much information you have on the, on the global state that you don't have on the local uh, marginal state. So these row S1s are just the marginalizations of the state. And then you get that the entropy production is uh, a sum of completely local and textbook thermodynamic terms minus the change in total correlations. Um, and you can similarly re recast this if you just use the first law and define work in this way. You can write this as the entropy production being a sum of local terms minus the total correlations. And then finally, you can, do, you can play the same game. You can write the total correlations as a total correlations in a diagonal basis energy basis, plus uh, a term which is again the distributed coherence, but the multipartite distributed coherence, so multipartite uh, sort of basis dependent discord. And then you just substituting this here, you get that the entropy production will be a sum of local terms uh, minus a change in classical correlation. So this is uh, what you would get for completely diagonal states of probability distributions. And then this will be the change in uh, distributed coherence. And so the interesting thing here is that if you now use this in the spirit of Landauer to uh, use the fact that the entropy production is non-negative um, to, to bound heat or to bound work, then you have a contribution to these bounds on heat and work which are related to uh, distributed coherence. 
Uh, okay, and I think that's all I had to say. I probably, I think I forgot to put some conclusions. I don't know. Yeah, thanks. Questions? Trying to think. No, no, no. So, so <laughs> you started with irreversibility, <laughs> and it's not clear to me that entropy production and irreversibility 